This is your Other Brothers Podcast. It's like running through an open door. It's like finding what you're looking for. We've been waiting. We won't wait no more. We got a beautiful story. Every moment on and on. We got a beautiful story. And we Welcome home, my friends. It is so good to be back from the jewel of the Blue Ridge of Asheville, North Carolina. My name is Tom. I'm so glad you all are here for the blessed return of your other brother's podcast. We are so, so excited to be here. Uh, Joining me today on our big comeback episode from the handprint of God, that's Mighty Michigan. It's our other brother, Ben. What's up, Ben? Hey, Tom, joining you from the other side of Michigan this time around. Exciting. The other side of the mitten. (laughs) Surrounded by the evangelical community, all of the people that are so happy that all of us queer folk are here. Welcome to Grand Rapids, folks. GR, we heart evangelicals. It's so good to see you, Ben. So good. Yeah, you got a new backdrop, a new room that you're recording in. A lot of newness, a lot of newness in the room. Good to see you. And then coming to us from the frozen summer tundra, it's our other brother, Will. What's up, Will? Hey, you know, I'm originally from Grand Rapids, so I feel like Mm. I have a foot in both worlds there. So, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to uh, be back on the podcast. Uh, It's so good to see you guys. You know, I got to see you guys on our Enneagram series. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. And so it's good to stay. It's not like for three or four months I haven't seen y'all's faces or heard your voices or even recorded an episode with you guys because we I got to connect with each of you along with a slew of my other brothers for that series. But there is there is a different energy when there's more than one person in the room. Like when there's multiples of us in the same room, I feel like there's just kind of a, a sizzle, a charge. And here we are, we're ready. We're ready and raring to go, coming back at you. Just kidding. This is an Enneagram part 12 episode. <laughs> Bait and switch. Now I got you guys all here. We're going to talk about the Enneagram once again. You have the Enneagram 5 here who doesn't care about the Enneagram. <laughs> like, yeah, this is great. I have to say, well, you know, I had a blast. There's so many aspects of recording that Enneagram series that I had a blast doing. One of my favorite parts of it was coming up with a title for each episode because I tried to I tried to like pluck out a quote or a line or a topic that was referenced during the episode to to title each of those Enneagram episodes. And I think, Will, your, yours might have been my favorite because I think if I remember correctly, your title was Will is Supremely Uninterested by the Enneagram. <laughs> <laughs> which is very accurate which is accurate for lots of fives i think i've heard that i've heard that same sentiment from other fives so yeah other fives felt less alone in this life or less alone in this enneagram saturated community so so you you served a purpose that day and you continue to serve a purpose well as do you ben ben have you figured out what enneagram type you are <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not okay. really. Probably not. Okay, it's fine. Just stay, stay in the box. Keep jumping around and enneagram fluid. You, you said something of that nature. You're just kind of yeah. You don't, you don't stick to one, one side of the spectrum. You can, you can bounce around. Yes. No. The enneagram series is over. We are moving on. That was like one of my dream, um, dream ideas in podcast land to do an enneagram podcast series and so I've, I've gotten that out of my system and i feel like like that is a huge checklist of doing um 11 episodes on the enneagram my goodness gracious so many and i'm i just feel i feel fulfilled i feel ready to go we're back on the yobcast after a little summer break um and today we're talking about the bible the b-i-b-l-e it's the book for you and me. That's what we're talking about today. In particular, we're talking about stories from scripture that minister to us, that bless us, that inspire us, that give us hope, that give us a little sense of ourselves when we look at these stories in scripture. Um, How do they speak to us, particularly as people of faith, people with same-sex attraction, people as people identifying all over the place, gay, queer, bi. I mean, our community is a rich smorgasbord of 
identities and labels. And so um, this this is, okay, this is a huge positive impact from that Enneagram series because we got so much feedback. I was blown away by the feedback that we got for the Enneagram series, people offering their input around the Enneagram. Um, and that feedback, to my delight, has continued into this episode. We got incredible postings from our Yabbers community leading up to this episode that I put it out there to the Yabbers just to ask them what stories from scripture speak to you. Um, and so many people wrote just amazing things. And so the fun thing about this episode is that it's actually a two-part episode, spoiler alert. Um, we're going to talk today with Will and Ben about their favorite scripture stories and and sprinkle in some Yabber stories as well. We'll also do this episode again with Ryan and Aaron in our next episode um, and keep the good times rolling because we just got, I think, a lot of good stories to share over these next couple episodes. And, and this is something I hope we're going to do more often. I think the Enneagram series showed me that I love um, taking our time with a topic. A lot of times when we do these recordings, I feel like we're very rushed and we're like trying to cram in a lot of content in 60 minutes or less. And so I kind of like the idea moving forward that maybe we split it up. Maybe we like split up like we're doing with these two episodes across multiple casts of people um, or potentially keeping the same cast and just splitting up episodes over a few over a few episodes. So, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think the Enneagram series has helped me appreciate an even longer form of, of podcast that, that we might utilize moving forward. So, um, so this is a part two, this is a two part episode. Um, we're going to start today with Ben and Will, and then we'll keep the good times rolling with Ryan and Aaron after this. Um, and I'm really excited to hear what the Yabbers have to say, because I, when I put it out to them, I was like, when you share your stories, it can be something as completely obvious and predictable as David and Jonathan because our community loves David and Jonathan. We can't wait to meet David and Jonathan in the new heaven and the new earth. We're gonna storm the gates for looking for them. Um, it could be as obvious as that, or it could be as as nuanced or as not obvious as drunk naked Noah. Like, how does that speak to you? I don't know. Maybe it does. <laughs> well, I feel like that that's, could speak to you. That's my daily life. That's, <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> I was like this, this, this. I was trying to think of like what is the polar opposite of David and Jonathan's beautiful friendship, drunk naked Noah. That's what I came up with. So, <laughs> which if nobody knows what I'm talking about, I feel like a lot of people don't know this. Like after the flood, Noah just got drunk and naked in a tent or something. Like, what oh is that? yeah, one one of the beautiful thing about like yeah, one of the beautiful things of every biblical story is the main character is like not as good as we think they are. And uh, Noah yeah. is a wonderful example of that. Well, and there's a good contrast there with, he's completely obedient to what God asks him to do. But after the flood, I mean, he just watched everybody in the world die. I mean, who knows, maybe, you know, things settle and like, oh, look, there's a bloated corpse on the ground. What's the response? I'm mm. gonna go get, you know, wasted out of my mind because Absolutely. I just saw everybody die. He, he didn't have better help available uh, to him for therapy. So it's. Uh... Mm. That's not a sponsor of the show. I, oh, it sounded oh like, sorry. It sounded like you were saying, and now brought to you by better help. Alcohol, cheaper than I, therapy. I, I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to get a sponsor for the show. That's, uh, I know. Uh, yeah, that gives gives us money. <laughs> I would be great. I would, I'm a big, I've used better help. So I, I support that, but, but yeah, no, I would imagine Noah could have used some therapy at that juncture. That probably would have been, that probably wouldn't have been good. That's something that I love about scripture is that like the author could have easily not included that story, but for whatever reason, it's in the Bible, it's there. And I just love, I love the well-roundedness that like you said, well, like it just, gives humanity to these people. Like they're heroes of faith and they did all these awesome things and followed the Lord's call and leading, but then severely flawed individuals and they mess up too and they do weird things like we do weird things. So I I appreciate that story so much. <laughs> and look at us telling, telling how the drunk naked Noah story actually does bless us because we are also messed up and weird and do strange things and and probably could benefit from therapy. So there it is. There it is. We made it work. We worked that into the content. That's a little teaser. We haven't even started the actual discussion yet. So there we go. Teaser. Yeah. Thanks. To yeah. Come. Just just remember, you're you're speaking to two like uh, uh, professional pastors here. Like we're we're able to like uh, connect any biblical story. That's 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 <laughs> it's part of the job description, right? That's what we're trained to do, right? 
<laughs> Absolutely. Something like that. <laughs> you know, I'm going to shout out, I'm going to shout out my pastor here for a second who, Pastor Fred, who was on the show a long time ago. He, he did a convo cast with me. I was, I was meeting with him yesterday and he was telling me that there are things that women can't live without. And, and he was like, and they all start with B, like when they find, or like the way he phrased it was, these are things that women will go to all lengths if they lose it or if they leave it behind somewhere, like they will drive five hours in the other direction to pick it up and, and get it. And so that they won't just replace it by buying another one on Amazon. And he was like, they all start with the letter B and they're, I don't even remember what they are off the top of my head, but like brushes or, um, a bathing suit or, um, babies. They will drive five hours back to go pick up the baby if they left it. Pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. But they, I forget. He he rattled off like two or three other things, and they all started with B. And I was like, that is such a pastor move to alliterate like this list of things, like just this thing, this organic conversation that came up, and they all started with the same letter. So I was just like, that is what a pastor move. Though, though, listening to that, I'm like, it sounds like I would do the same thing. So I don't know what that says. <laughs> Like hairbrushes are very important. Like, if you find a good hairbrush, Will Cooper, don't you, yeah, you don't lose that. You hang on to that thing. Oh, where is my hairbrush? <laughs> that, that's for the evangelical kids out there. They know what that reference is. Maybe later for the uh, Yabawog, I can I can sing that song in my best ah. impression of Larry because I, I can do that. Okay, we're gonna do that. So Yabawog listeners, stay tuned. If, if you're listening to this on the Yabcast, l- let that be an incentive to join us on Patreon. So that you can listen to Ben sing, where is my hairbrush? In the Larry voice, no less. Indeed. Wow. Indeed. Okay. Please don't let this episode, this recording close before we get that done. Mental, mental reminders. <laughs> okay. As I said, you guys, this is our first Yobcast since May. And we are recording this episode the first week of September. So it has been like almost four months, four months since our last Yobcast. An entire summer has gone by. Have you guys done anything exciting or noteworthy this summer? Ben, I know you moved. So that's that's the thing that happened this summer. Moving, starting in a new school, you know, just a few life changes. Um adding another another roommate into our household. Wow. So yeah, lots of stuff. I think you probably had the most eventful summer of of all of us. I can't imagine. Will, has your summer been any any level of eventful? Um, well, it d- depends on what you mean by eventful. Like uh my my summer was just uh, plagued by denominational meetings. Uh so that's uh Ooh, yeah, exciting. Yeah, so that was that was something. Uh but I, I went camping in Wisconsin, so that was that was good. Oh, did you camp in a tent? I did. I, I was camping with family and I I have a one person tent that I deeply love, which is yeah. weird to love a tent, but I do too. I deeply love my tent. I haven't used it in so long. I and the summer here, it's like it's been a, a very mild summer, not too hot at all. Um, and I feel like I need to use my tent before the summer is over. Maybe that reference will inspire me to do so. Cause there's not there's nothing like sleeping on the ground, getting like 45 minutes of sleep at night. And there's just nothing like it. Do you bring, do you have like your own little coffee thing that you bring out in the woods and make? Please tell me yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm you. very minimalist with everything with camping except for coffee. I, I bring, I bring my scale, my pour over, my uh, handheld coffee grinder. And it's, uh, that's amazing. I do go a bit overboard. I, want to be more like you because all I do is I bring Trader Joe's has this pack of instant coffee with that's like loaded with cream and sugar. And so all you got to do is literally boil some water, put it, dump it in, stir it up. And you got, it's a decent cup of coffee. It's not going to be as like, I'm not as proud of it as like when I brew my own coffee at home, but it gets the job done when you're out in the wilderness. Do you have a good way of censoring language on a podcast? (laughs) I mean, I use the bleep button occasionally. I've had to break it out. Usually with Ryan Berger. Shout out to Ryan Berger making me break out the bleep button. Wait, you times. you haven't used the bleep button on me? Like oh, I'm I, sure, that's what I I'm sure I have. There's Yabalog beep bleep button and then there's Yabcast bleep button. And for some reason, I'm thinking Ryan has more Yabcast bleep buttons. So if you want to get back in contention, Will, throw in some 
throwing some words here today. <laughs> well, it sent coffee as <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay. Chalk one up for Will Cooper. Ben, meanwhile, is a good pastor. You don't swear ever, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. You guys are so fun. It was so good to see you. See, see what I was talking about? The sizzle, the charge. We didn't get this kind of energy when we were just one-on-one. -on -one. This is this is what we're looking for. This is what the people have been craving and missing. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we're back. Despite everything, you're also getting me, believe it or not, less stressed than I have been in probably a couple of years, which might seem counterintuitive, mm. but just I'm I'm enjoying life right now. I'm enjoying pushing pause on a few things. So maybe you're getting me a little bit more animated, a little bit less uh a little bit less six-ish. I'm not stressed over everything uh -oh. that could happen. I don't know. Someone's picking a number or 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 leaning that way for now. As for me, so it was fun this summer. Uh, this will bleed into announcements here in a second, but I was a part of two book clubs this summer because Yab has had a book club for a couple of years now. So that's been fun to keep going. Um, but then this summer, my church did a book club as well. And I felt like I had to say yes. I couldn't say no to... This was like my first ever in-person book club. And so um, we read this book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer, um, who used to pastor a church out in Portland and has written several books. Um, and I quite enjoyed it to the point that it was, it took a conviction. I was like already feeling convicted about my relationship with technology, just how busy my life constantly is attached to things and scrolling things and utilizing um, utilizing technology in like every aspect of my life and just feeling this need to, to cut some cords in my life. And reading that book kind of helped push me over the edge. And so some huge development of my summer, much to the dismay of lots of other people in my life, it has been my lack of an iPhone. So I got rid of my iPhone, switched to a quote unquote dumb phone, and it only has like texting and Texting and calling, obviously. There's a lame, that camera's not even worth using. It's so dumb. It doesn't, it, there's no point to it. Why would anyone take pictures with that thing? Um, and then it's got like calculator and clock and all that, you know, fun, exciting stuff. So it doesn't have a lot. Um, and it's just been an interesting thing because I've noticed my life, I've been going without an iPhone now for a couple months and I definitely noticed myself more productive than before. That's absolutely true. Um, but, also way more frustrated. There's like a frustration quotient that comes with that. Like I feel more productive, but I also feel more angsty and angry. And um, and Tom doesn't get angry. Like I've, I just wrote a blog post about this, that anger is so hard for me to to process and name and, and quantify and how do I express it in a healthy way. Um, my lack of an iPhone has made me an angry person. And so I don't know what to do with that because um, case in point, trying to coordinate podcasts and zoom calls with you guys and the other guys on our leadership team like i feel like i'm tra i'm like spinning out of orbit like i'm darth vader who's gotten blown away by by the rebels and i'm just spinning in space and i'm trying to like stay tethered to you guys and i'm trying to figure out how to do that and um and it's just difficult it's challenging so i'm just confessing that right now well i'm i'm difficult to get a hold of to begin with <laughs> yes and for some odd reason like we can't text each other on our phones. Like, no. <laughs> uh, like Tom gets my text messages, but I don't get text messages back from Tom. And uh, so, this yeah, true. Uh, you leaving the iPhone, I totally get it because I've thought about going the dumb phone route many, many times. But moments like that, it's yeah, yeah. This is like this is so typical. Will is a five moment because. You have some setting on your phone where it's like you don't get noted. Like I applaud you for it. Like you don't get notified during certain hours of the day or something. And for whatever reason, some setting on your phone is interfering with when I try to text you. Because whenever I text you, I get an error message back from you that says message has been blocked or some some weird thing that I've never heard of before. So I don't know what to do with that. I get your messages, but you don't get mine. It's like, and I've tried like changing those notification <laughs> settings and it so doesn't make a difference so i i don't know what's going i i appreciate the the effort but this would be so much easier if just the world collectively agreed we're done with smartphones we're going back to a simpler way of living like that would make my life so much easier if everyone else would take the mature step that i've taken but that no one else is doing it so i don't know what to do i just feel like i know it's been benefiting me in a lot of ways so the question is i i wanted to give it three months 
And we're getting to the end of that, like in the next month or so, um, this three month experiment to see what does Tom's life look like on the other side of, of not having an iPhone. Um, I still have it. I'm just not utilizing it. So, um, so I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, I'm up in the air right now. I'm curious if any of our listeners have made that switch. Um, that's that downgrade or that, that step backwards, so to speak, going from a smartphone back to a dumb phone. I would love to hear how you handled that and how, how you're doing. Like, what were the pros? What were the cons? Um, was it worth it? Do you feel like you'll go back again to smartphone life? Like, Please hit me up either personally, Tom at yourotherbrothers.com or better yet, leave a comment on this episode on our podcast page. Um, let us know how that goes because because I see I see the benefits for mental health, but I also see just how massively inconvenient it is because a smartphone makes life so much easier in so many ways. So it's tough. It's a tough balance. In the meantime, Ben and Will, please continue to be patient with me as I reach out to you as we theoretically plan future podcasts or other meetings or things, things that we need to stay in touch about. So hey, you've I been patient. You've been patient with me many, many times. Um, so I, I will extend that patience back to you. Thank you. And meanwhile, Ben will not, Ben will withhold his patience. <laughs> that is correct. I put up with enough in my lifetime. I don't need yours. There's the bleep button. <laughs> is, is this episode going to get the most bleeps? Because Y'all I hope out it does. of control, out of control. We need to rein it. You can't. You guys, I feel like are getting it all out of your system after four months of no recording. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta rein it in. Well, once we actually get to the scripture, I'm sure we'll feel at least somewhat convicted. If we, well, maybe I will feel convicted. I mean, I don't know about Will, but no, I don't get convicted of anything. <laughs> <laughs> your conscience is seared. Hashtag worst pastor. That's. <laughs> I was gonna say. Quote of the episode from Pastor Will, I don't get convicted by anything. Okay. It's interesting that you found your way into your other brothers. I don't know how you got here, but. (laughs) All things are permissible. (laughs) Not all things are beneficial. Hmm. Will doesn't get convicted by anything, and yet he's choosing to live a celibate life. That's just just how he rolls. I'm I'm a paradox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that you are. That you are. Um, you guys, we haven't read an Apple Podcast review in forever. And if you have not done that, if you have not taken the time to rate our show on Apple Podcast, um, please, please take the time. We would love your rating, your honest review. Um, and then we'll read it on the episodes. That's something we thoroughly enjoy doing, whether it's positive, whether it's constructive, whether it's just flat out negative. We've had a couple of those. Those have been spicy to read. So, um, we just went honestly, like, what do you think about our show? Um, we would love to hear from you. So just head over to Apple podcast. You can use a pseudonym. You can use an alias, um, bonus points to you. If you use like a fun alias or pseudonym that we read, cause those are always just fun to read. So, um, so yeah, we just appreciate the support. It always keeps the keeps the show current, keeps it relevant in the algorithms and the searchability. Um, so yeah, just appreciate all of you guys who have already done that. And if you're listening, if you're a new listener, um, you wouldn't mind doing that. We would super appreciate it. Some other announcements. I mentioned book club. Um, book club, it's all it's all attached and associated with our Patreon page. So if you go to patreon.com slash your other bros, all the information is there about joining our community. And book club is one of the several community offerings that we have. We meet on the third Wednesday of the month for book club. Um, This month we're reading like one of the more unique books we've read. It's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, It's like an ancient Toltec wisdom book. So it's kind of like, it's kind of out there in a lot of ways, but it's very practical. It's like, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just like, these are four ways that you can massively improve your life. And we're reading that book for the month of September. We'll be meeting on the third Wednesday of this month. And then next month, and I'm looking straight at Will Cooper for the reaction. We're reading Out of a Far Country by Christopher Yuan and his mother, Angela Yuan. And we'll be reading that next month. And it'll be a great discussion. That's the thing about book club. Wherever you stand on any of the content or any of the authors or any of the books we've read, the discussions have always been so vibrant, so dynamic, um, so full. I was like, we never have awkward silences. Everything is just full. It's respectful. It's um, it's just a great it's a great couple hours once a month. And so we would love to, we would love to have you there, Will Cooper, for for that book club if you can make it or any book club for that matter. 
you know, I, I have all sorts of emotions tied with that book and not all of them are negative. It's, it's okay. important to realize that. Um, but I think I first read that book at Exodus or Did at least, I, yeah, okay. at least that was my, that was my first, uh, Were you like reading at the lunch table. Like I could see you just reading at the lunch table instead of socializing with the other. I socialize kind of, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but but that that year, I think it was either 05 or 06, Christopher Yuan shared his testimony at that Exodus conference. And that was ah. my first uh, sort of introduction to him and read his book after that. And uh, so there I have some positives with it. Like it did have a positive influence, okay. but I have some criticisms as well. So my interaction with him, he was the first person that I ever actually verbalized my sexuality too. Um, he shared in chapel when I was an undergrad and I found him afterward and stuttering, got to tell my story out loud for the first time to somebody. And it was actually a very good conversation. So my initial interactions with him were, were positive, but later on, well, you know, we talked about that before. I was going to say, this is the second Christopher you on reference of the episode. As we, uh, we talked, you guys talked about, um, a podcast that he appeared on several months ago. And that's on our Yabalog. If you guys missed it, there's a private podcast feed for the Yabalog. If, for those that are subscribed on Patreon, you can find that episode there along with all the other Yabalogs we've done. We've done a few dozen of those episodes now. So those are fun um, bonus content episodes for all the things that don't make it into the, the main Yabcast show. They go to Yabalog country where... No holds barred. It's the Wild West. Every Anything goes on the Yabalog. Will hasn't listened to a single episode, so he has no idea what he said on there. He completely forgets. But he said some very um, he said some very inflammatory things. You guys can listen to that to that episode if you want. <laughs> Not the spicy details. I'm sure Ben Ben has too here and there. But yeah, Will Will you you shine especially in that in that in that domain. This is the whole reason why I use a fake name. So uh, uh, no, no, none of that gets attached to me, right? That's how that works. No, exactly. Exactly. It's a free pass. It's a free pass. Um, and the baseline of our of our community for five dollars a month, you know, we have a Discord server, we have a Facebook group, and and actually, as of now, we are throwing together our fourth camp retreat. We are planning a camp retreat for November of this year, um, and. It is already figuring to be our most attended retreat based on the number of signups we have and and we still have a couple months before we even get there. So it's figuring to be a widely attended event and we need you. We need whoever you are listening to be there. And the reason I'm putting that out there is because it worked the first time I did this. Um, at our virtual retreat, I announced that we were doing that earlier this year and we got at least two people who took the jump, who heard, the, heard us talk about it on the podcast and they're like, you know what? Sure, I'll I'll cough up five dollars a month, ten dollars a month, whatever, and try it out. Just see what see what this whole this whole yobbers experience is. It a cult? Like, what is that? What's what's being in the yobbers all about? Um, and they came and and they both told me that they were so glad, so glad that they came. And so um, I would be remiss if I didn't at least put it out there again because this might be one of the last times um, that I'm able to say it on the air before signups close. And or and or the the retreat fills up. So so if you're listening to this right now, if you're listening to it live or like semi live to when this episode releases, um, we would love to have you there. If you're curious to check it out, like join us on Patreon, give it a try, connect with some people, shoot me some messages. If you have any questions, I always love answering questions. Um, we have guidelines and expectations that all incoming members agree to abide by, and so we want to create a safe atmosphere, um, a place where people can be vulnerable in a safe setting, and so. Um, this will be our fourth camp retreat. I love these events. So excited. This is our first back-to-back -back year of retreats since 2019 because the pesky pandemic threw off our momentum and threw off our rhythm. So it feels like we're gaining like new momentum again. Um, and I think that's going to figure into the theme of this of this retreat is this new momentum, this new growth for our community. So, um, so we would love to have you there. If you guys have any questions, hit me up. I always love answering some some good old retreat questions. Like, are there communal showers? Like, how's what's the shower situation? Or, <laughs> or, or is there a shirts and skins basketball game? Like, what? How does how does your retreat work? And if you ask me, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the answers, but I won't say what happens on the air. You gotta you gotta email me directly. You you know, Tom, this is sounding more and more like a cult. Like you have like. <laughs> 
sort of secret information that you won't share with people right off the bat. And uh, yeah, 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 that's true. I just want I just want the retreat to be special. Like I don't want to spell it out for everybody. Like I want people to enter into it for those who have never been to like experience it for the first time. You know, not have to hear about it secondhand. So that's 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 all. But I can hear I understand how that comes across as cult. One, one of the requirements is everybody has to wear a pride shirt. <laughs> You must be adorned in rainbows upon entry to our retreat. <laughs> covered covered with glitter. Pajamas will include crop tops. Must have crop ah, tops. Yes. Or rompers are also acceptable. <laughs> that would be what a sight to behold. What it, could you imagine like all the people parking their cars and coming down to the registration table just dressed like that? What a sight. This is at a Christian camp, right? That that would be hilarious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are we are at a Christian camp. So that always, yeah, keeps it exciting. But yeah, retreat number four coming soon. Um, something else that's coming soon, our hundredth episode of the Yobcast. I can't believe we are on the doorstep. I have delayed this. This has been something. If we had kept to a normal schedule this year, this hundredth episode would have happened months ago. But here we are entering the fall of 2022. Um, we still haven't gotten to 100 yet, but we're about to. Like this is the the home stretch now of getting to episode number 100. We are three episodes away, four episodes away, something like that. Um, and we want to hear from you guys. Like something we want to do on the 100th episode is hear from our listeners about why this show has mattered to you. How has this show blessed you? How has this show encouraged you? How has this show annoyed you? We want to hear it all. We want to hear the feedback, just like the Apple Podcast reviews in written form. This is Apple Podcast Review in audible form. Um, and my my vision, my hope, because we've got a couple months before we get there, um, is I would love to just have a time where we just play several voicemails. You know, we try to always shoot for one voicemail an episode. We don't have any this episode, but, um, but it's always fun to play one or two voicemails on these episodes. But for that episode, for the hundredth one, um, would love to just hear from the listeners. If you can share something on the Yob line in like 30 seconds or less so they can like rapid fire, um, fire off some voicemails from our community, we would love to do that. I would love to hear from as many of you as possible, whether you've called the Yob line before, especially if you haven't, if you've never called the Yob line. Um, tell us what you've enjoyed about our show. Um, along with that, if you have any favorite moments, favorite memories, favorite quotes, um, favorite episodes, favorite episode topics that we've dived into, um, any of that is up for grabs. Like I would love to hear from you guys. Um, and then post those voicemails on that episode for us to enjoy, comment on, laugh about, go back down memory lane as we remember some of the moments from the last hundred episodes. Like that would be so fun. So if that inspires you at all, and I hope it does, call our Yob line 706-389-8009 and uh, tell us a story. We would love to hear from you. And finally, before we dive into the topic, we have to thank our sponsor. Thank you, Papyrus. Thank you for sponsoring this episode of the Yobcast. Not the font, but the the paper. You guys are biblical scholars. Was the Bible written on papyrus originally? Were were these things written on papyrus? Is that am I am I am I at the right era of humanity here? Portions. Yeah, you need to remember that the Bible okay. was uh, written over a very large time span correct so it's uh um yeah portions of it um so drunk naked noah papyrus jesus samaritan woman maybe not well it's like the new testament a lot of our earliest versions were written on papyrus for for the new testament so ah also some vellum mm -hmm. there you go only papyrus though is sponsoring this episode to be clear um yeah, without you, where would it be? I was hoping uh, dried animal skins would also be a, 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 <laughs> a sponsor here. So, um, you know, there were a lot of there were a lot of uh, things throwing their trying to throw their hat in the ring to to sponsor this episode. You know, four skins um, was one. I don't know. There's a lot in the Bible that could have made it like pigeons or oxes or things that get sacrificed. Like that was an option. I don't know, but papyrus felt like a good safe option to sponsor this episode. I, I was thinking the other day, it's so weird that like, um, as a pastor circumcision comes up in like normal conversation without it being weird. And I'm like, 
that's weird. Like it's yeah. uh, <laughs> it is like weird. it's like I mentioned I mentioned circumcision in sermons all the time. And it's like, oh, that's a weird thing to talk about. So. Yeah, you should really cut it out. <laughs> Oh, uh, we we have so much fun here. Um, that's a great segue to this episode. Um, you guys, scripture is so fun. Scripture is so great. We're going to talk about scripture today, um, which I felt like was a good pivot from 12, 12 episodes of Enneagram talk. You know, we're back to the Bible, back to the basics. Um, no more of this new age, like hippy dippy Enneagram stuff that we've been into for these last few months. Let's, let's go back to the Bible because that's that's who we are. We're Bible people. And we're going to talk about stories that speak to us. And I'm really excited to hear from our community. Again, the Yabbers were the all-stars again of this episode. They provided such amazing feedback. And actually, we had an Old Testament Zoom call. The way I broke up these Zoom calls was um, a couple weeks ago, we talked about Old Testament stories that spoke to us. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll be talking about New Testament stories that spoke to us. The community was so great. Like They shared stories. You know, I was thinking it would be a lot of David and Jonathan. I just, I, I honestly, I, I sold the community short. I didn't expect them to have the the breadth of Old Testament knowledge that they had, but there were some deep pulls. I mean, we talked about Moses, Jacob, and Joseph. We talked about Mephibosheth. Shout out to Mephibosheth. He came into the conversation. Um, we even talked about the singers at the front of the Jericho army. That is something else we talked about on our Old Testament Zoom call and how that resonates with us in our community. So it was a great Zoom call, another perk of our Patreon community. So um, so this is just an extension of that conversation that we had. Um, I'm going to try to have a couple of those stories shared with with uh, with you guys from the community. But first, I want to go to you guys, Ben and Will. Um, let's start with one story each. Like, What's a story from scripture that intersects with you in your journey with, with faith, with sexuality, with masculinity, with any or all of those topics? So I, I've been like, I have a few stories that, that have come to mind, but when I read like some of the, uh, Yabber's feedback, um, one of those stories, one of the feedback, or I actually, maybe a couple people mentioned this is the story of Hagar. And that's a story that has really impacted me for many years. And so I'm like, oh yeah, that'll be, that'll be a good one to, to bring up. Yeah, so let me read the Yabber feedback on Hagar, and then Will and Ben, for that matter, you guys can chime in on your thoughts on how this story intersects with you. So here's what one of our Yabbers said about Hagar. Um, he references Genesis 16 with some other details from Genesis 21. Um, but he said this, from the very beginning of her story, we see Hagar getting tossed around because of who she is. She's an Egyptian, an outsider to Abraham's family. Yet instead of getting to mind own, her own business in Egypt, she finds herself as a slave stuck in Abraham's family. On the one hand, she's unwelcome. Sarah oppresses her. Abraham is indifferent toward her. And eventually they discard her. On the other hand, though, she's still useful to Abraham's family. Sarah uses her as part of a little experiment to see if God will give their family a child. When Hagar actually gets pregnant, though, it rubs salt in the wound with Sarah's own barrenness. Their smiles grow fangs. Hagar ends up on her own in the wilderness twice. In one story, she's a runaway. In the other, she's expelled from the family. Maybe the difference between the two isn't all that important. But in both stories, God meets her and provides for what she needs. In one story, he gives her the courage she needs to go back and serve her dysfunctional family. In the other, he provides for her and her son so that they can start their own. Through these twin stories, we learn a new name for God. Hagar says, you are El Roy, the God who sees me. I have now seen the one who sees me. The themes of Hagar's story remind me of the fears of growing up gay in the church and the perceived, sometimes real perils of coming out to friends, family, and leaders. I'm an observer at heart, so I kept my eyes and ears opened. I heard how people joked about, quote unquote, the queers and how they poked at my voice or my hair or my lack of girl crushes. I got the sense that being out would also mean getting thrown out. I watched as other peers in our large youth group came out. Most of them, like me, were dedicated volunteers who loved their faith, yet nearly all of them ended up leaving the church. Some were practically driven out by parents or friends who were fearful of what their child had become. Others sat patiently through ex-gay sentiments and passive-aggressive comments until eventually letting themselves out the back door. All of them were Hagars, driven out or escaping from their dysfunctional families. 
In late 2019, I had my own wilderness moment. After a series of panic attacks, I quiet quit from the life of the church, showing up on Sundays while pretending to be too busy with school for much more. In the middle of all of this, the lockdowns hit and forced me not just inside the house, but within myself. Nobody to pretend for, just me and God in that little wilderness of my room. I was tired of feeling afraid. I was tired of feeling like I didn't belong in a family I was serving every week. I was tired of not being known. In this little wilderness, the God who sees me reminded me of his presence. He nurtured the wounds in my heart and helped me unearth the more painful truths about myself with kindness and gentleness. I wasn't praying for it, but he provided water and family for me in the form of new friends, podcasts like Yab, books, and other networks of people, both close and distant, who get the Side B experience. And now he's giving me the strength and courage I need to go back and face the old family, dysfunctional and all. It's been full of awkward and painful conversations, but slowly I'm setting aside the fear and leaning into honesty, vulnerability, and faithfulness, locked shoulder to shoulder. Some of us might be reintroducing ourselves to old and partially dysfunctional families. Other of us might have been called to leave for our own health and are in that lonely in-between. Others might be navigating the shock of finding brand new families and learning how to be vulnerable for the first time. Through it all, he sees us. He knows. He provides and he's going to help us be seen by the right family at the right time. I was like, can we just bring this guy on the show and talk to him for an hour? Because like that was epic. No offense, other yabbers, that you got a lot to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so beautifully written. I. Uh... That's the thing about our community. They are so, again, the Enneagram series showed this to me, and as if I didn't already know this, but like our community is so articulate, so poetic, so in touch with their feelings and their experiences, drawing these connections to scripture. Like that was, I I will never look at the character of Hagar the same way. How does that speak to you, Will? Like, do you see a lot of similarities with what, with what he shared? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, a couple, a couple of other details that have also stuck out to me with that story is, um, within, within the text, like you see the name Hagar mentioned right off the bat, but you actually don't see uh, uh, Sarah and Abram um, actually use the name Hagar. The first character in the story itself uh, that uses the um, Hagar's actual name is the angel that meets Hagar. And so uh, before that, like Sarah just refers to Hagar as the servant, like uh, like somebody who isn't even worthy to have a name. Um, but uh uh, God uh, uses or God's messenger uses the name Hagar and uh, and Hagar gives a name to God like it is incredibly powerful to to uh, see that interaction there um, I think often people in our experiences like and it's reference into the um and to the feedback that that you just read as well often in our experience people use demeaning language without connecting like the the person to the language so like like hagar was just referred to as a servant it wasn't like um um they didn't see her as a person and often in our experiences we hear people use um demeaning language against uh lgbtq people without connecting the the person to it that like we we are real people who who are behind this language and so when we look at who we are as christians that we are beloved children of god that that um that we aren't just seen as like um like as an issue i guess but as a real person by god it it really lifts us up out of the um yeah lifts us up out of the sort of despair that we usually see ourselves Mm -hmm. in yeah absolutely i feel like so much attention goes to you know, the the line of Jesus, like, so starting with Abraham, going to Isaac, and then going to, who comes after Isaac? Jo- Jacob. I always get Jacob and Joseph confused. But yeah, Jacob, then Joseph, and then, yeah, and then on and on and on. And that's all obviously well and good. Like, there's there's merit and there's value to all of those stories. But again, something I appreciate about, about scripture is just like, oh, yeah, and then Hagar and Ishmael, 
they exist too. They're people too. They have value and they have worth too. And um, and the fact that God is present with them and that we we see their story played out and it's written out like that's um, for anyone that just feels marginalized, whatever wherever you feel like you feel like you're not the main character in the story. Like you, I feel like that's that's kind of like a meme or a joke on the internet. Like like who's the main character or who's a side character? Um, like I think that story is such a great one to show um, that God sees all the characters, God sees all the players in in the story that He's writing, and that's just. So it's just such a reminder and such a beautiful thing. And again, I'll never, I'll never look at it the same way, just based on, based on that story. Um, well, and I think it's also like one of the things that sticks out to me is, um, is Abraham is somebody who is like, yeah, a patriarch of the faith. Um, and it's important to like notice the his many failings and his transformations and whatnot that happened through throughout that uh, story. And it's a good reminder for me is like, even though I've been deeply hurt by many um, people in the church, many well-respected people in the church, uh, many people who've gone through their own personal transformations, like it, it, it's a good reminder to me that it's like, um, that like i i should see that god is working and people have hurt me as well and so um so the the story of hagar's just kind of brings in all of those elements yeah and i love the shout out to yob like this is so touching like the fact that our community can be um you know one of many resources and helpful places helpful way stations along this journey that you can find us encounter us our blog our podcast or even our community um just to find that sense of of someone who gets you someone who understands the same experience that you're not crazy that you're not completely isolated um and this this place for the in between like for people like there are valid wounds and valid reasons why we've either left our churches or our families even um but maybe god's calling us back maybe he's not maybe there maybe there's a not yet maybe there's a waiting portion um but I love I love that that our community can be there for anyone that's on the in between. You know, if you need a place to hunker down for a season or two or longer, we have some people we can't get rid of. As hard as we try, we can't get rid of them. And it's just so great that um, that people in whatever whatever state of between or in between that you are, um, that you're welcome here. You've been trying to get rid of me for like six years. I now. know. It's like we're getting close. We're on the other. We're getting closer and closer to a decade. So a decade of Will Cooper. Lord help us all. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see if I'll write another blog post within that uh, decade. <laughs> oh, don't don't get me started, Will Cooper. <laughs> on the on the Yabalog, on the Yabalog, you tease the Selige Manifesto, which has still yet to come to my desk. Hey, so manifestos so take time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Brilliance, brilliance. You can't rush it. You gotta wait for it. Uh, ben Rykowski, what have you to say? What? is a story from the BIBLE that speaks to you. So not knowing what Will was necessarily going to land on, I I had like six different ones that I was thinking I could I could lean into. Ooh. Um you should have a wheel behind you and you can spin spin the scripture wheel and where's it going to land? The wheel of scripturality. Shout yeah. out to Good Mythical Morning. Um <laughs> yeah, so Acts chapter 2 is kind of where the church just launches. You know, Peter preaches this sermon um, and thousands of people, you know, it says they're they're cut to the heart and they say, what shall we do? And Peter's response is, repent, be baptized, each one of you in the name of Jesus. And you get to the end of Acts chapter 2 and it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Going on a little bit further, it says that uh, they sold their possessions and shared with one another as any had need. Um, which some people are like, that sounds a little communist. But uh, the the reason why that had to happen, you know, Jesus told his his followers that they would be put out of the synagogues, that they'd be you know kicked out of their families for following him. And so in Acts chapter two, what you're seeing there is people have been thrown out of their families. They've been thrown out of their synagogues because they've claimed the name of Jesus. 
And so the Jewish community being a tight knit community, you know, even like it is today, you would go to other Jewish people's shops, you would, you know, have fellowship with other Jewish people. And so to be in Christ meant that you lost your ability to sell to other people. You lost your ability to, you know, make ends meet, to have family, to have community. And what you're seeing in Acts chapter two is the church becomes this beautiful extension of the family of God to anybody who would come in. Um when I say I had several different scriptures, like the things that come to mind there, it's a culmination of the gospel. Um, you know, the the parable of the, the wedding banquet, you know, go out in the highways and the hedges and compel anybody to come in because those who were invited are not worthy. And so the servants go out and they call in both good and bad. And how does the church view LGBTQ people that still claim the name of Christ, a lot of them view us as outside of Jesus. You know, that that unless we're we're going to the extreme of, you know, completely praying the gay away, um, that we aren't following Christ. And so they put us outside. And that's why you have, whether it's Christians or, or not within the gay community, this idea of chosen family. So Acts chapter two is the beginning of that idea of chosen family, of people who were not family, becoming family and taking care of one another. And, you know, like for, for Marie and I, one of the things that we've, you know, kind of set up our house, I mean, again, we have a five bedroom house. Um, it'll eventually be a six bedroom house, actually. Dang. Yeah. Hey, shout out to the Ob community if you, anybody wants to come stay. Um, <laughs> who needs a man? Who needs a mansion in heaven when you have a house like that in your corner of the mighty mitten? Like what a what a what a slice of paradise you got there. And we've we've you know opened up our home for for people that need to need to process their their faith, their sexuality, find that that safe space. Um, <laughs> One little story. So we we had a friend from Grand Rapids who um, you know, grew up very, very conservative and same kind of situation with his family where, you know, he came out, he wasn't really accepted. And when he met Marie for the first time face to face and he shared his story with her, her background is very conservative Baptist. And so he shared his story with her. And in many ways, it, it was he didn't realize it at the time, but it was a parallel for him sharing with his family, which rejected him. And for her to come from that same background, even that same geographic area, and for her to, to tell him, of course, Jesus still loves you. Of course, you're still part of the family of God. And to em embrace him and welcome him into our home, he broke down in her arms and just wept because for him it was it wasn't a return to his family but it was a parallel of like what would have happened if his family had actually seen him loved him acknowledged him and welcomed him in so yeah acts chapter two um the family of god is more than it's more than blood. It's more about who you were raised with. Uh, it's who you invite into your home. It's who you choose to do life with. And it can be beautiful. Yeah. And I love that you like insert yourself into the the hero role. Because I think it's so interesting. Like when I no, this is that's not condescending, but I want to I want to like state my vantage point, which I feel like a lot of guys would resonate with. It's like when you read Acts Acts 2 and the, and the story of the early church, like my heart breaks because I'm like, why is that not today? Like, why is that not a real thing where I feel included in such a vibrant, connected community? Um, the flip side of that is like, why not, why, why not take the responsibility to help create that reality? Like, like I think for me, I've always wanted the church to spoon feed me stuff like community and, and interconnectedness and um, a sense of fulfillment or, or pursuit or purpose 
Um, but like, what if it's as much on me? Like, yes, the church has their responsibility too, for sure. But, but what if I also have a responsibility in ways that I can step up and provide that sort of a, a place for others? And maybe Yab is one conduit for that if it's been, you know, helpful to people to feel like they can belong. But I love what you're doing there in Michigan, like to have a house with so many bedrooms to welcome people in like that is what a beautiful, simple yet, you know, amazing way that you can bless people. Like, I hope you're, I hope you'll accept me as a guest one day. We would love to have you. I require three bedrooms myself. (laughs) I'll need my things in one room. I'll need a workout room and then I'll need a bedroom. So you know what? That would actually work at this point, believe it or not. But anyway, no, but like to bounce off of what you said there though, like this question of like, why, why isn't that, why isn't that what, you know, the church is necessarily doing? And again, not to jump into another scripture, you know, full bore, but like, what's the parable of the good Samaritan? It's a response. You know, Jesus is responding to somebody who asked the question, well, well, who is my neighbor? And the end of the story is the neighbor is the one who chooses to exercise compassion. There were other people who had the opportunity and chose not to. Were they still that person's neighbor? They were supposed to be, and they missed the opportunity. And it's the person in the story who is the the least likely, at least in terms of societal convention at that time, who ends up picking up the poor broken person on the road and taking care of them. And that's the gospel. So, you know, it's not uh, meant to be condescending either to say, be the change that you want to see. Um, you know, I, I know for for me, part of the reason why we're able to do this is because, you know, we've had people that have claimed us as their chosen family and they've loved on us and built us up. And so now the roles are reversed and we get to do that for other people. Um, Yeah, the invitation of the gospel. And again, in Acts chapter two, it's making disciples who make more disciples who make more disciples, inviting people into family, building them up, watching them run towards Jesus and heal. And then they, in turn, get to do the same thing for other people over and over and over again. The church as it's supposed to be anyway. You know, the gospel comes with a house key. Sorry, I had to make a Rosaria Butterfield reference there. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, we love a callback. You guys are doing a great job connecting beginning, middle, and end of this episode. Every, Every time I hear... Ben talk about chosen family. I always get so excited um, because I hear Ben talk about it all the time. Like, well, one time he even spoke to my church about chosen family. So it's uh, Ooh, yeah, ba- back in, fun to hear back in the days when we were doing a lot of church stuff over Zoom. Um, but okay. it's like it actually reminds me um, of everything that Ben just talked about remind me the other day i was watching rupaul's drag race and um as as one does and and, um like the one of the things i noticed is almost every episode brings up the the concept of chosen family and how it's transformed their lives of um, these people who've been like rejected from their homes and and whatnot it's a reality for for many people and i'm like why like theologically christians have such a deep ground um or a deep well for us that that develop this sort of chosen family thinking like this like something that can really just bind us together like through the holy spirit and yet we're so poor at living it out like it's uh when when i watch uh yeah rupaul and see better examples of chosen family than what i often see in uh the local church experience it, it always causes me to struggle but but like you guys have said it's uh um we are also responsible to bringing that change about so it's uh highlighting the the family aspect of our faith uh all the more Man, love a good RuPaul reference as we talk about scripture because this is your other brothers. We have to, we have to do that. That was perfect. Um, I wanted to read this um, one Yabra. He did a New Testament. He did an Old Testament and a New Testament reference, and I wanted to read both of them because they kind of go together. Um, this could maybe wind down our our conversation, our part one, because we're only just getting started talking about scripture and stories that that speak to us. Um, but he talked about this. 
So for his Old Testament reference, he went to the book of Joshua, Joshua 2 and 6, um, Rahab. Rahab is also mentioned in Matthew 1, Hebrews 11, and James 2. He was so thorough with his referencing. Um, and here's what he had to say about Rahab. Israel is beginning to enter the promised land and has sent out spies to investigate the nations and cities that they will encounter, especially Jericho. When the spies enter the city, Rahab the prostitute hides the men from her government and professes to the spies that she recognizes God as the one true God because of what they've heard about Israel until now. The spies promise that she and her household will be protected when the siege on Jericho happens. And as a result, she and her household are brought into Israel and she becomes part of Jesus's lineage. This is one of my favorite Old Testament stories because it shows the mercy and grace that God gives to all people, even those who, is, even those who are seen as the least deserving. Rahab's family was not only protected and delivered because of her faithfulness and willingness to go against everything she had known for a God she had never encountered, she herself was honored long after her death through the lineage of Jesus and as an example of faith in Hebrews and James. As someone who frequently feels undeserving and lesser within the church, stories like these remind me that God often works through the social outcasts to make some of the most impactful statements. That's such a parallel to Hagar. I mean, it's like whores and prostitutes. There's someone, we won't have time to read about it today, but someone talked about Hosea and Gomer and that story, we'll get to that probably next time. But like, that's, that is a huge reason why I love the Bible. I mean, it's just like, full it's full of outcasts um doing heroic things like i it's it's amazing it's beautiful i almost brought up the the story of philemon and onesimus uh, because there's a lot of aspects of of that story too that i think relate to this because you um because according to church history now some people disagree with this but the person of onesimus a runaway slave um and uh he went back to uh philemon and paul is essentially asking philemon to see onesimus as a brother now uh not as a, a slave but as a brother um and uh according to church history onesimus became a, a church leader uh in ephesus now whether that's actually what happened or not we don't know but it's uh seen that um, uh, beautiful progression of a slave to a brother to a church leader. Um, and so for many of us who feel like we're not heard, uh, we see this um, hope that like, like, oh, we're part of God's family and uh, God sees us and God um, can give us the the gifts and the, the positions to, to serve the church well. So yeah, I just... I always get so hopeful uh, by looking into those uh, biblical stories. Yeah. And it came up in our, our Old Testament Zoom call. It's like a lot of people I think have a, in the church, like we tend to focus on Jesus too much. Can I say that? We focus on, we focus on the New Testament too much. When there are so many stories from the Old Testament that are just inc incredibly profound and incredibly relevant, especially to, to people who identify as minorities who feel on the outskirts um, I, I think there's so many characters and so many stories um, that can be a blessing to you if you feel like that in, in your day-to-day -day life. Another story that goes along with that, he talked about the Samaritan woman at the well in John 4. Um, and here's how he described that little synopsis of a story. Jesus and his disciples were heading to Galilee and passed through Samaria on their way. Jesus stopped at Jacob's well and rested there while his disciples went into the city to get more food. The Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus asked her for some. They ended up getting into a conversation about living water, her adulterous lifestyle and faith practices, worshiping in Jerusalem versus the mountain in Samaria. Eventually, she brings up the Messiah and Jesus reveals to her that he is the Messiah. This story is near to my heart because it's such a culturally unexpected scene. Yet here we find Jesus with the worst of the worst in the eyes of the Jews. Not only that, but she is the very first person after beginning his ministry who is told explicitly that he is the Messiah. Jesus chose the lowest of the low and said that she was worthy to know his full identity. Similar to the story of Rahab, I often feel unworthy to be a part of this family, this story that is still being written. But the Samaritan woman reminds me that even at my lowest, Jesus sees me as worthy of knowing all of who he is and of being able to share all of who I am with him. 
Yeah, and someone else commented on that story too, and I figured I'd lump it in and and share that perspective. Um, someone else said this: When I was in Cameroon 12 years ago, it was a water trip. One evening, we were at one of the wells, and all of the women in the village were there. It reminded me of the story of Jesus with the woman at the well. While all the women were there, I could understand the rejection a woman who was rejected would feel. That Bible story was made alive to me. I think that there are times when perhaps I have done this to myself, thinking that because of my sin, I am the outcast and basically excommunicated myself. I could totally get it. I, I get it as an introvert. Like I would want to go to the well when nobody else is there, like high noon or whatever time of the day it was when nobody else was there, like especially let alone having a stigma associated with my identity based on, um, yeah, just based on my, my sexual practices or the people that I was partnering with or what have you. And to be able to just have the space to be by myself. I imagine, I wonder what she felt when she saw that somebody else was there. Like, did she almost turn around? Did she, did she like hide to the side and see if he would just get his water and go? Or did she eventually get up there? Like, I kind of want to get into her head a little bit and see what her, her mindset was coming to the well to see this man just sitting there, this, this Jewish man sitting there. Um, but then you know, the incredible conversation that happened. And then I totally forgot that he, that she was the first person that Jesus like completely identified as the Messiah with like that. How cool is that? And he does that again and again with women throughout scripture of like the first missionaries or the first, you know, people to proclaim his resurrection or, um, or what have you, like women are so included in Jesus's ministry. And what a, I don't know, what an encouragement today. I know we're not a female community yet. Your other sisters, maybe a thing. Shoot me a message, by the way, if you missed that announcement. But yeah, I mean, what a beautiful, what a beautiful picture that everyone, everyone has purpose, everyone has inclusion in this community. And we we don't have the the time to get into it, but all the cultural barriers that Jesus crossed within that interaction is just incredible. Like it's uh um there's so many layers that are going on within that passage, and it's just like out of the love and concern that Jesus has for this person, just breaks off those barriers. And it is such a beautiful thing to see. I got to add one more thing. So one of the things we see in scripture is the standard that God sets. There's, there's law. There's something that reflects the holiness of God and the standards that he sets. And God has the ability to punish the breaking of the law. Yet throughout scripture, over and over and over again, where you could see judgment, God so very often extends grace instead. Was this woman living against the law to be divorced and remarried, and then she's with a man who isn't her husband? But who's going to protect her? Who's going to take care of her? Because a woman not attached to a man in that society, what's going to happen? So Jesus doesn't condemn her. He acknowledges her situation, but he shows her love, mercy, and grace. And there's a point where Jesus is confronting the Pharisees, and he's talking to them about how, you know, they're willing to go to the ends of the earth to, to make a disciple but they make that disciple twice the son of hell that they are, that they tie up heavy burdens and put them on people's backs, but they don't lift a finger to try and help them to live out the life that they're calling them to. And to some extent, I I think there's a good parallel there with how the church often treats sexual minorities, where it's like, we want to put all of this weight on you. We're going to place all of this burden on you, but we're not going to lift a finger to help you. But Jesus sees us. Jesus acknowledges where we are. And even when we fall short, rather than, you know, being kicked out, he shows love, mercy, and grace. And to add on to that, like, uh, that is, Jesus has a wonderful theological conversation about worship with her, like more in depth and delightful than the theological conversations you see with the the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Like it is uh, like just a a wonderful um, conversation where he doesn't 
condemn her uh, mm. with the question that she has about worship. And it is just just absolutely incredible and kind of like a dream of mine. Like if I could have a theological conversation with anybody, it's of course, Jesus. Uh. <laughs> uh, we're only just getting started. You guys, we opened the can today. We'll finish the can next time, but this was, this was good to start to crack open, crack it open. And we had a good mix, good mix of old and new Testament today um, of getting some characters and some stories put out there. Um, we'll keep it going with Ryan and Aaron in our next episode. But um, for this one, if any of those stories that we mention speak to you, if you want to add your own thoughts, please do. We would love to hear from you. Go to yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast. Find the episode 96 post on scripture and tell us, tell us a story. Or if you want to just like totally add a new one to the mix, tell us a new story, depending on when this episode comes out. No, I'm doing the math in my head. I was going to say, if you share something, maybe we'll share it on the next recording, but I think, I don't think that'll not in this universe. It won't happen. It won't happen with the, the way things will be scheduled. But but nonetheless, please post. Um, if there's another story from scripture that speaks to you, that has met you in your journeys um, with sexuality, with masculinity, with with where you belong um, in this faith, like please, please post. We'd love to read even more, even the more than the ones that we've already gotten. So um, thank you in advance for doing that. Um, thank you to Papyrus. Without Papyrus, none of this would have been, or some of this rather, wouldn't have been possible. I don't, again, I don't know the details on what was written on Papyrus and what wasn't, but I know some portion of what we have wouldn't be here. So thank you. Thank you, Papyrus. Um, again, not the font, not the Ryan Gosling SNL sketch. If you guys have seen that, that, that is like one of my favorite SNL sketches that has ever been posted. You guys got to watch it if you haven't seen it. <laughs> so Ryan Gosling, like getting angered by the fact that Avatar, that movie, that James Cameron movie, uses the papyrus font as its titling and he just starts it's so it's the most random snl sketch like it's like so funny because it's so out of left field like why why is ryan gosling angry about this but it's it's so funny well and ryan gosling is a very attractive man i was gonna say (laughs) shout out to ryan gosling had to throw in a ryan gosling reference whenever whenever possible yeah so that's all so ben and will thank you for sharing some of your pastoral perspectives as well um, also your human perspectives. I'm divorcing your humanity from your pastoral qualities. <laughs> That's never a good thing. <laughs> yeah. No. Pa- pastors without their humanity yeah. always end up uh, messing everything up. Mm. <laughs> There's some Gnosticism going on here. Just a little bit, I think. <laughs> just a wee bit. Yeah. No, your pastors, you're also people and you have so much to offer. And I'm so grateful for hearing your perspectives today and um again we'll be in touch in some way shape or form about scheduling the next podcast so stay tuned for for you guys i'll I'll reach out to you by carrier pigeon if i have to or owl or or whatever i prefer owl you prefer owl okay (laughs) i'll do carrier pigeon to michigan and owl to alberta how about that smoke signals are also appreciated smoke signals okay we'll we'll make we'll try to figure this out without my without my iphone in the mix anymore i do respond to telegram as well not the app the the actual telegram oh like the little yeah or like stop something like stop to end the sentence yeah or something. yeah that that sort of okay. thing okay yeah okay yeah, so we'll be in touch. We'll, we'll keep the podcast train rolling. As we get closer and closer to episode 100, you guys, call the Yelp line. It's so fun. You'll regret it if you don't. <laughs> so there's that. We'd love to hear from you guys for our 100th episode coming coming soon, Lord willing. Um, but for now, for this episode, for all your other brothers, my name is Tom. And I'm Will. And I'm Ben. Thank you, guys. And I just want to remind you, In case you've forgotten, you are not alone. Even the sparrow finds a home. See you guys next time for part two. Bye, Ben and Will. You won't be there. Bye. You'll you'll be there in spirit. (laughs) I'll I'll criticize the interpretations of uh... (laughs) that. Yes. Thanks for listening to Your Other Brothers Podcast. Our show is edited and produced by Thomas Mark Zuniga. If you enjoy our show, consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Your Other Bros. We'd love to hear your story. Comment on this or any of our episodes at yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast or share a story to play back on our show by calling us at 
706-389-8009. You can also email us at podcast at yourotherbrothers.com or write to us at Your Other Brothers, PO Box 843, Asheville, North Carolina, 28802. Finally, if you'd like to further support our storytelling, community building efforts, consider becoming a Yabber. Yabbers pledge monthly on Patreon and receive perks like bonus podcast content, access to a secret Facebook group, regular group calls with fellow patrons and authors, and more. Visit patreon.com slash your other bros for more information. Until we journey next time, we're glad you're with us.